But there was this article that I would like to share with you. And if the people who want to help Kisia Jabin uh, want to look at it, they can look at it. It's written by a guy called Kofi Opari Hagan. And that's his photograph. He writes, he says, A lawyer is as good as their legal ethics. A lawyer who fails to abide by the professional ethics is simply incompetent. It does not matter whether the breach has an element of dishonesty in it or not. It is an ethic of the profession to never question the motives of a judge without sound evidence. The basis of the rule is simple. A judge decides on either a question of fact or a question of law. Where a judge has made an error of law or fact, the remedy is an appeal. The requirements of an appeal, even in Ghana today, are that the lawyer specif specify the error of law and fact. In the case of an error of law, the courts require a lawyer to make to detail what law was binding on the judge that they did not either consider or apply or how the judge misapplied the relevant law. In the case of errors of fact, it is now a requirement for the lawyer to detail what evidence was ignored or misapplied from the record. I, I guess we're following what he's saying. He's saying that he said that there is much ado about nothing. If you are a lawyer, you cannot question the motives of a judge without evidence. The judge is invited to do two things, rule on fact or rule on law. If he misapplies the law, you tell him, point out the part of the law that he misapplied or you point out the part of the law that he ignored. If it's a matter of fact, you point out the evidences of the fact that he should have considered. And you do this on appeal. That's as simple as that. In the ethics of the profession of the lawyers, you don't go and sit somewhere and criticize a judge in the manner that he did with rumors. Some people have told me that. That's what he said. Let's move on. There is a sound judicial policy for this practice. He's explaining why it is so. First, when a judge is biased, they necessarily act in breach of their judicial mandate. That means they become liable for impeachment. Such an allegation wraps on the integrity, not just of the judge in question, but also of the judiciary as a whole. It, is, it therefore follows that, on the strength of fairness alone, such allegations are not made without strong evidence. Second, a judge, by their calling, is unable to respond to allegations of bias. That's the point I was making. That's the point Kisia Jabi should know. As a law lecturer, he should know that the judge cannot respond. The judge cannot conduct a press conference. The high court judge cannot tomorrow call the press and say, this is why I ruled against Kisia Jabi. When we get there, then our democracy is gone. We are a banana republic. Life is nasty, booties and shorts. That's where we go to. When we get there, we are a banana republic. When we get to the place where judges are now explaining their rulings at press conferences, is that what Kisia Jabi wants us to do? Because a judge cannot do that. Lawyers are guided. That you shouldn't do that too. When you have something to say about the judge, you go and say it in the court of appeal. You go and say it in the Supreme Court or other Supreme Court review. And if you end at the Supreme Court review, you hold your peace in the interest of the Republican Constitution. Those people who want to bring the constitutional order down because of their selfishness, we must point the door to them, the exit door. They should be exited. We can't have that. This republic is very tiny. And this republic is on a constitution that's only 30 years old. We can't have the danger of Kisia Jabin telling us that the judiciary are against him, therefore he should be above the law because he's investigating corruption. When there are many allegations mounting against his own conduct, his own modus operandi, allegations upon allegations mounting against his modus operandi. Let's move on. He says, on the strength of fairness alone, such allegations are not made without a strong evidence. Okay, to the next page. Making such loose comments, therefore, Injures a judge by attacking them when there ought to be knowledge that they cannot reply. Third, a remedy in law exists to address issues of bias and even the likelihood of bias. A lawyer who is competent and has suffered bias is required as part of their duties as an officer of the court to invoke the supervisory jurisdiction of a high court to remedy the situation. These are things you don't need 20 years in law, including as a teacher, to get. In fact, not getting these simple things after 20 years is scandalous. He's referring to Kisi Ajabi. That not getting these basic things is scandalous and affirms a conclusion of incompetence. I have always stated, he says, that the OSP is not merely incompetent. He is totally unethical in his conduct. Hmm. That's heavy. That one is heavy. Those are not our words. Those are the words of him. We do not necessarily agree with it. 
We do not necessarily believe in it. But as a matter of public interest, we are sharing it with you. A reader's article, and a viewer's article, a Ghanaian's article. These are the things he's saying. He says the office of the special prosecutor is unethical and is incompetent. These are his words. I have always, he said, stated that the OSP is not merely incompetent. He is totally unethical in his conduct. It comes from the same mindset with which he conducted himself as counsel for Anas. Oh, now a guy is getting into some dangerous area. <laughs> he said, no, hold, hold on, viewers, hold on. He says that I have always stated that the OSP is not merely incompetent. He is totally unethical in his conduct. It comes from the same mindset with which he conducted himself as counsel for Anas. They seek to bully and intimidate. And where that doesn't work, they seek to damage the reputation of the person in the eyes of the public. That's what they do. That's what I call evil. That's evil. If that's what they do, it is what I describe as evil. He said, they seek to bully and intimidate. And where, they, where that doesn't work, they seek to damage the reputation of the person in the eyes of the, of the public. That's what they do. That's what they do. None of the four cases mentioned by the OSP had any hope of survival in law. The natural impulse of any reasonable lawyer reading his arguments in those cases would have been hopeless. No wonder he could not, as a matter of law, identify a single error any of the judges made. And that's important for the journalists. I get very, very worried about these things. That's very important for the journalists. You see, journalists, public officials should not be able to feel confident to call a press conference and come and spew out anything. Journalists, I'm talking to journalists now. They are my people. It's very worrying to me. Journalists, public officials should not feel that they can take their paper and come and do a press conference and they will just get away with it. Because the guy came to allege bias. He didn't provide a single error of law to the media. And nobody asked him. Nobody asked him about Article 125. Nobody asked him about the provision of the Constitution. He just came and just spewed us on hogwash and started pity party and speaking some tree to show that he's, he's some patriotic guy. Really? Patriotic? I'm not sure about that. I guess next time, we shouldn't pick up our OSP from the... China, do, oh no, that's too much. I can't, I can't even read that. We shouldn't pick someone who just wants to add the title of OSP to his CV. That I can read. But the first one, I, I can't read it. It says, we shouldn't pick up someone who just wants to add OSP to his CV. He just wants to add OSP to his CV. But it's not lost. Kisi Ajabe can recover. Because he was teaching criminal law. It's not lost. He just has to change his mindset. He's not God. And he's not above the law. Once he gets these two things correct, he's fine. He's not above the law. He must know that when he's investigating a case, he will go to court and meet other lawyers. It's not a walk in the park. You are not going to court to walk in the park because you are a special prosecutor. You are not going to walk to court to be met with a bed of roses because you are a special prosecutor. You are going to the court for your arguments and your decisions to be tested by the law. The litmus test of the law is going to be applied to the decisions that you make. As a special prosecutor, as attorney general, as president of Ghana, vice president, chief of staff, something official, member of parliament, speaker of parliament, da da da, all the authorities in the state, you, everything you do is going to be tested. Even in Article 9, 296, it says that even where it is a discretion, that discretion must occur in the following manner. Even where it's a discretion, 296 regulates what a discretion is and how a discretion within the context of the public official can be litmus tested. Two nicer says the discretion ought not to be capricious. It ought not to be baseless. It ought not to be this, to be that, to be that, to be that, to be that. Two nice says the, 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 the expression of discretion is there in the constitution. He said that is well aware of that. And then he goes to spew out this hogwash in the press conference. Oh, I guess next time we should, okay, no, I, think that's, I think that's it. Uh, we shouldn't pick someone ignorant journalists would applaud even when a first year LLB student can see oh he said all that but uh, that's what I was saying I, I will not say ignorant journalists anyway I just think that they didn't pay much attention I don't think they are ignorant I think our journalists are good I think they are fine they just didn't pay attention and journalists I beg you next time let's pay attention to these things let's get the Ghanaian people applauding us that you're able to ask a good question 
When I started doing Good Evening Ghana, I miss people on the street, 2002, 2006, Charlie, you asked a great question. Journalists, let's get that happening. Let's get people to... You see, Ajabi shouldn't just walk to a press conference and just talk, talk and go away. Ken Oferata should not just walk into a press conference and talk and go away. Interior minister should not be able to do that. John Muhammad, the opposition leader, should not be able to do that. Let's raise the stakes of journalism. Let's protect the public and the constitution with knowledge. Simple knowledge. Read the constitution. Tell him that, Mr. Man. Article 125 is here. It says something. Have you averted your mind to it? Let him feel that he has come to the press conference and he has had to convince the media. He has had to convince them. Let us feel. Let, let, let him feel. Let a public official feel that when I went to the press conference, I needed to convince them. Let him not feel that he walks into a press conference and it's a walk in the park. No. Even if he pays for the press conference, he's entitled to pay for you. The journalists are entitled to be paid for it because it is his matter. It's not your matter. You are in your newsroom. You have your news. He has invited you to come to press conference. So if he's paying for it, it is okay. He should pay for it. That doesn't mean that you cannot ask him the critical question. You should. And he should pay a lot more for it because he has money. That's a joke. That's a joke, by the way. That's a joke. Okay, Kofi Hagan, your words were strong a little bit. Uh, the the nice-looking nice guy. Uh, Kofi Hagan, your words were quite strong, eh? Hmm. Anyway.